shows how little you know me. I've come to invite you to lunch. You did? Well, I don't suppose you'll ever allow me to pay for anything. Well, you can pay next time. Good. I've been thinking of um, getting out of Paris. Really? Well, why don't you come with me? No. My work is right here. I feel like driving down to Provence. I'd enjoy your company. No, thanks. When I'm in a car, I get nervous when anybody else is driving. Well, then you could drive. You'd be doing me a favor. <laughs> now, that is typically American. I suppose you think everybody in the world owns a car. Well, the fact of the matter is, I don't even know how to drive. Well, you could learn in no time. I think you'd enjoy it. We wouldn't have to make any plans. That's the great advantage of having a car. No timetables, no booking rooms. You just get in the car and drive. Spend the night wherever you happen to be. You're free. Oh, come on, let's be young and foolish. <laughs> you are persistent. Yes. <laughs> Maggie, are you sure? Absolutely. If I am to be the mistress of a rich American, I must look like one. Monsieur Antoine? I look like a kept woman. You look beautiful, my sherry. <laughs> <laughs> you really think it's all right? It has to be. Ah. Oh. Thank you. 
Mary! Maggie! Maggie! Do you approve? You look stunning! It's <laughs> wonderful! <laughs> You're a jewel! Thank you. Now, all we need is the setting. The setting? Mm -hmm. Come on. Of course. You know, you are really a remarkable woman. I don't know anyone who manages to manipulate people so cleverly that they're totally unaware of it. Well, that's not fair. What's unfair about it? I mean, what's wrong with being rich and perfectly dressed and being able to look down your nose at anybody and have life turn out exactly as you want it to? I'm sure there are lots of women in the world who would love to change places with you. And who the hell are you to tell me what kind of a person I am? Nothing and no one matters to you except your work, does it? I mean, is there anything else you really care about? If there is, I haven't seen it. A monster. <laughs> All right. Perhaps we're both monsters. But listen, why shouldn't two such splendid characters as we make uh, an interesting combination? Hmm? Listen, why don't we... Go up to my room and experiment. Oh, don't tell me you haven't thought about it. Oh, I know. You want me to say pretty words like, I want to make love to you. Well, if that doesn't suit you, just say so. You won't hear from me again. Well, romantic. Yes or no? Come on. Come on. Come on. 
Oh, Perry, it's very elegant. Oh, well, wait till you see the apartment. I'm going to get the very finest decorations in Paris, and of course, we'll, we'll have to have a staff to keep it up. You want me to interview a butler? Exactly. You, you think it's too big? Anything more than two rooms is big to me. Maggie. You said you wanted to be kept in style. Oh, I just want to go back to my little room at Paula's and hide. you want. But why not give this place a chance? It's not as though you have to move in tomorrow. It'll take time to furnish, and then when it's finished, if you have even the slightest doubt, if you still think it's too big, well, I'll simply get rid of it. What do you say? I am so stupid. Of course I will try. I can hide anywhere. Not from me, you can't. Want some more wine? No, no, thanks. Don't you long to paint that? No. I would never even dream of painting this. Uh, it's too vast, too complete. There's nothing I can give to it. Isn't there anything you felt like painting here? No. No, and you know, that's the worst of it. Not to want to paint, not to need to paint. <sighs> See that young couple walking over there? Their hands almost touching, but not quite. Each of them has just discovered something about the other, but it's still a mystery. You know, once I could have painted that a dozen times. Those hands almost touching. But if I, if I don't want to paint them, if I don't need to paint them, I, I ask myself, why am I a painter? And if I'm not a painter, why am I alive? Julia. Come on. The grass is wet. Beautiful farmhouse. this place? 
No one, mademoiselle. The old owner died. And the lawyers, they said my husband and I should stay on as caretakers. Did you want to see it? Shall we, Julia? Do let's. No, no, darling. Come on, let's go. Thank you, madame. Like a drink? Yes, well, I'll join you in a moment. I need one. like a tourist, monsieur. Hardly. I'm from the north, but my name is Mistral, which I understand comes from around here. What do you do for a crust of bread? I'm an artist. An artist? You? You don't look like an artist. You don't believe me, eh? I can draw you and your big nose. <laughs> Turn around. Put to the right place. Bother? All right. <laughs> Keep your head right there, please. No move. Yes. There. What do you think of that? Hey! That's me! Let's hope your newly born son doesn't turn out to look like that. <laughs> How about you? Draw Victor behind his bar, putting up the price of beer. <laughs> I'll need a bigger piece of paper. <laughs>
Hello. Mm. I'm going back to work, Kate. Oh, I'm so glad, my darling. Ah, I can't wait to smell oils and turpentine. And I'll tell you something. If I don't feel a brush in my hands very soon, I think I should go mad. You know, who would have thought that making those little caricatures that I did yesterday would have inspired me to paint again? It was a trick that I learned as a boy. I'm not going back to Paris, either. I don't know why I didn't think of it before. That anthill where idiots talk rot about politics and schools of painting and religion, I don't need that. This is where I belong. I'll go to Villeneuve, rent an empty house, turn it into a studio. I'll send for Legrand. He'll give me paints and supplies. The accounts will go to Avigdor, and he'll get the pictures that he wants. Wonderful. I'm going to stroll into the village and see what I can find. Julia, I think I'll drive into Avignon. I'll pick you up later. Very well. 